breaking conspiracy theory news. This might be the biggest event in conspiracy theory since 9-11. And I don't think that's an overstatement either. This is huge. Somebody blew up the Georgia Guidestones today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode, a special episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. Hope you guys are having a great day too. I'm actually on my vacation. I'm cutting my vacation a couple days short because this is such big conspiracy theory news that I couldn't wait to talk about it. (laughs) I'm like, I'm super excited about it. I'm not like, yes, property damage. But this is huge in the world of conspiracy theory. So I could not wait until Monday to talk about this. This is so big. So we're going to start season 18 nice and early. But I, because we're kind of doing this off the cuff, I don't have any of the conventions, anyone to give the shout outs to. So everyone hop on board the Carpenter Copter. We are leaving behind Dead Rabbit Command. We're headed all the way out to Georgia, of course. This story is huge. I, I, I got to admit, when I first saw it pop up, I wouldn't say I was in shock. Like, I first saw it pop up in the High Strangeness thread on Reddit. Really early this morning. I'm recording this on July 6th. So really, the morning after. And it was weird because I saw it and I knew what it meant. But I almost couldn't comprehend how big this is in the conspiracy theory sphere. This is so huge. But let me give you a real quick background. Some of you guys may be like, I actually assume most of you guys know what the Georgia Guidestones are because you guys are a well-informed group. But a really quick overview. They were placed in the 1980s. There's this, basically it's this stone structure. It's been called America's Stonehenge. It was placed in 1980 in Elbert County, Georgia. (laughs) I'll just start reading the Wikipedia page to kill time. No. In Elbert County, Georgia, back in 1980... These giant stone slabs or granite slabs were erected. That's okay, right? People can do modern art, right? <laughs> I'm not necessarily going to go tip it over myself. But what really... This, the reason why this blew up in this conspiracy theory community, it's not because people don't like art or they're like, what, America doesn't, doesn't deserve its own Stonehenge? No. How this really kicked off in the conspiracy theory community is what it is, is it's a set of rules, And we don't know who put them there. The person only identified themselves as a Robert Christian. Robert C. Christian went to this granite company back in 1979 and said, hey, I want to have these giant things erected. And they thought he was crazy. So they said, oh, it's going to cost this. And it was like way over the amount that it would cost to make them. And he's like, yeah, fine. Okay. So they erected this and he bought the land or leased the land and he put these up. And it's basically supposed to be this set of rules that will dictate the future. So in a sense, the Georgia Guidestones, some of the rules are kind of nice. But the reason why the conspiracy theory community really latched onto these, and, and I'm not saying it was necessarily a bad thing for them to always be looking at who did this, because there's been no record of who this Robert C. Christian guy is. They've never ever been able to find out who he was. That's supposedly a fake name, but And I know I'm kind of rambling. I don't have my normal notes. Like, again, I'm kind of doing this episode a little more freestyle. He put up these Georgia Guidestones. And let's look. I'm not going to read the whole list of rules. But there's 10 of them. And a lot of them make sense. I know all of a sudden a bunch of my listeners are grabbing ropes and pitchforks to come kill me. Hold on. Before you kill me, some of these rules do make sense. And they're written in multiple languages. And the idea was is that... If there was some sort of huge calamity like a nuclear war, that's what they were kind of thinking. These things would out these things would outlast nuclear bomb, but obviously they've been destroyed. We'll get to that in a second. But let's look over these rules and why someone might want to destroy them. Uh, let's start with rule number three: uh, unite humanity with a living new language. I, I don't think most people would have a problem with that one. My favorite uh, two are five and six. <laughs> if I had to pick my top ten Georgia Guidestones in this order. And I know, I know you guys probably just want me to get to the explosion, but let me, let me, because I, I feel like I do need to clarify some stuff here. Rule number five is protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. No one's against that. No one's like, what? No, I want my courts to be rigged. And number six, let all nations rule internally 
resolving external disputes in a world court. Wouldn't that be great, right? You have two nations that wanted to go to war. China and India are constantly beefing over that border. They take it to the world court. But what you do in your own country, that's up to you. I think, I think those are reasonable rules. Number seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Who would disagree with that? Even the most ardent, diehard conspiracy theorist wouldn't be like, what? No, <laughs> make all the petty laws you want. The reason why these have garnered so much hatred is rules number one and two. And really rule number one. This is written on these Georgia Guidestones and it's written in several languages. English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, traditional Chinese, and Russian. Rule number one. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. So rule number one has always been considered to be the end goal of the New World Order, the end goal of the Illuminati. If you're not up on your current Earth demographics, 7 billion people and counting right now. So to get to 500 million would be a mass culling of humanity. Only a psychopath, I feel, right? Only a psychopath would be for the killing, the wanton killing of 6.5 billion people. Now, I, I, I would say after a nuclear war, right? There's not going to be a bunch of people around, right? So if these were built thinking there was going to be a nuclear war, they're like, well, we didn't have to do any killing ourselves, but let's say there's a whole horrible nuclear war and then the cavemen, they turn into like mutants. And then a couple people who could afford bomb shelters, they were fine. <laughs> After the mutants get done killing all the people in the bomb shelters, the mutants would then learn to read the Guidestones and go, oh, maybe we shouldn't have more than 500 million freakish mutants roving across the radioactive wasteland. But this was always been considered the Illuminati saying the quiet part out loud was these Georgia Guidestones. Number two people have a problem with this as well because it says guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. And a lot of people have seen that as eugenics. Right? Like what happens if a baby, <laughs> they make all the babies run right out of the room and the baby's not fast enough? We take it out of the gene pool. Like people saw not only is it cutting down the human population to 500 million, it's eugenics in its purest form. Only the strong survive. But, you know, like the rest of them are pretty good. <laughs> Those two absolutely horrid ones. Number nine, prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. I think that's, you know, that's, that's pretty sweet. But to get there, you have to kill, you have to kill billions of people. So that's the Georgia Guidestone. So now... If you weren't familiar with them, or if it had been a long time since you read them, that's a good little overview. The big news is, so again, these were erected in the 1980s, and this has been a cornerstone, no pun intended, in conspiracy theory community. When you talk about the Colorado airport, the Denver International Airport, you guys have all heard those conspiracy theories, with the weird murals inside the airport and the demon horse outside. I've, I've been to Denver International Airport a lot. And you have these giant murals and they're weird. I don't know if the murals are still there. But for a period of time, the murals were there. And the murals of like a, a guy in a soldier suit moving his sword through like a bunch of kids. It was really weird imagery that seemed to show strife and war and genocide. And then a rebirth of this new world with less people in it. A lot of people connected the Denver International Airport to the Georgia Guidestones. Again, like the, this was all, they were saying what they wanted to do out loud. So it was a huge fixture in the conspiracy theory world. This was, growing up, I was born in 1976, right? I've been into conspiracy theories pretty much I ran out of the womb to a bookstore and started reading about conspiracy theories. I've been into this stuff since the Guidestones have been erected. And it's something you just came to know was there. I mean, similar to the Bermuda Triangle. It was just part of conspiracy theory lore. It was so much it was in the background. It would come up from time to time, but as time moved forward, you'd hear about it less and less because it was just this thing, this giant monument it's about 19 feet tall, and it's like these several slabs. Well, anyways, that's the background to the Georgia Guidestones. That's how it fits into conspiracy theory lore. Well, on July 6th, 2022, early in the morning, somebody blew it up. 
And there's video footage of this. There's video footage of this. I'll put all of this stuff in the show notes. We've been talking about it on the Patreon Discord. And I got to give a shout out to Patreon supporter. I'm living in your walls for being the first person to post it in there. Beat me to it. It's a lot of fun on there. And we've been talking about it. And so somebody blew this. Well, really, they blew up one of the slabs. Remember, on each slab is like two different languages. There's quite a few languages on there. And the idea that it was going to be like this Rosetta Stone type of thing. So if you could translate one side of it, you could learn these other languages as well. And, and it could use, be used to translate other things. Saying that all of civilization is destroyed, you could use this to read these other languages. I don't necessarily know why they included Swahili in there. but And the idea is, is that one of these slabs was blowing up. And again, when I saw that news, I thought, okay, so what could have possibly happened here? What's, they're actually not saying yet that it was an explosion. Even though, I will put the video in the show notes, it clearly blew up. You can see fragments flying everywhere. But the authorities at this time of me recording this have not said that it was an explosion. And I think what they mean by that, that they don't know if it was a bomb. If somebody did it. I mean, unless the government's uncovered this new way of <laughs> destroying things. <laughs> Professor X was there ripping it apart with his mind. They're not saying it was an explosion, but I remember... I saw the initial article and I go, I, I mean, again, I was almost in shock because this is such a big event for the conspiracy theory community. Okay, it's such a big event for the conspiracy theory community. Somebody attacked, in, 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 in essence, the Illuminati's Ten Commandments. Now, now what's it? I feel like I, I was actually going to record something fairly brief here, right? But now I feel like I have to, my personal view, this is so interesting. I feel like I'm kind of coming off half cocked on this thing, honestly. But the idea that this is the Illuminati's Ten Commandments is the general belief in the conspiracy theory community. I, I, okay, here's my thing. Here's my thing. And I've talked about this several times on the show. I don't think there is a singular group that currently controls the world or is trying to control the world. I've talked about it a lot. I think there are a lot of groups, some very powerful and some trying to weasel their way up there that want to control the world. And there's constant alliances and shifting power balances and things like that. Because if you say the Illuminati runs the whole world and it's one group, it's these 13 families that have ruled the world since time immemorial or since the French Revolution, whatever start point you want... When people go, well, what? that doesn't really make sense. So, like, what was the point of, say, the Vietnam War? If one group ran the whole thing, then why would you have this, why would you have this whole thing in Vietnam that... It doesn't make sense. But if you had multiple groups vying for power, and you did have a group that was based out of France that was trying to keep their empire in Asia, the last remaining piece of their empire in Asia, and then you had a group that was coming out of communist China... That was now starting to flex their muscles and they have all this capital and they have, they have all these resources and they're trying to make their moves. Or a pan-Asian alliance all over. And you have all of these all of these factions fighting. That makes sense in the world of the chaos. That makes sense. If you had one group that controlled everything, it doesn't we would have been conquered by now. If you had one group that controlled everything, then why haven't they pulled the trigger yet? Why don't we all have chips on our hands? Why aren't there 500 million of us? They could have launched a nuclear war in 1982 or 1983 or 1984 or 1985. If there was only one group, they would have pulled the trigger. They would have pulled the trigger back in 1880, right? Why would they have waited this long? So I think there's multiple groups. They're all vying for power. So I, I don't necessarily think that the Georgia Guidestones was the ruling classes rules but there i do believe there were somebody's rules i do believe that there was a group because there was like this anonymous group that was backing this so-called robert christian i do believe this was a group of people who this was their vision for the future and i do think they believed that it wouldn't work unless you only had 500 million people and i do think they believe that if there was an opportunity to restore humans in balance with nature they would have taken it but they didn't have the power to do it so I don't think it's the Illuminati's, but I think it is a Illuminati's. I think it is a world power, a group behind the scenes trying to control stuff. I think it was their rules. 
So I do believe that. I just wanted to be clear on that. So it's not, it was somebody set this up, and somebody thought it was a great idea. I agree with some of the points. Probably should stop saying that. Probably should stop saying that. But um, somebody blew it up. Somebody blew it up. And when I saw that, I thought, whoa, that's really crazy. And then what really prompted me to say, I have to talk about this today. Like, I kind of snapped out of my... This is huge. It would be the equivalent of if they said, oh, the Bermuda Triangle got sucked away. <laughs> like, there's a bunch of UFOs floating around. Like, this is huge in the conspiracy theory community. Basically, Ewoks are dancing around and fireworks are going off over the moon of Endor over this. Now, it got tore down. So only one slab blew up. And Mason, a longtime Patreon supporter, one of the mods of the Discord, said, we might, he said this earlier, he goes, now we might be able to figure out who actually erected them in the first place. Because they did this back in 1980, 1979, 1980, they're filling out all this paperwork. Now there's been this big explosion. If they want to repair it, we'll, we'll know who is behind it or we'll have more of a clue. They just tore it down. This, today, today, like a couple hours later, they removed the entire structure. Multiple slabs, multiple tons of concrete were hauled away in the middle of the afternoon. America's Stonehenge is no more. The Georgia Guidestones are gone. I, I, I did not predict that at all. Like, when Mason said that, I thought, oh, dude, that's a really good point, because, yeah, someone... Like, is there insurance on this? I mean, I'm sure if you're running the world or vying to control for running the world, you're not worried about your insurance payments. Well, I, I did not think they would tear them down. Like, this is huge. This is huge. And I want to touch on two other things, because I feel like this is really rambly, and I hope this is entertaining. This is a weird way to start off season 19. Maybe. Or maybe it's super entertaining. I don't know. I've, I, I could honestly talk about this for hours, I never would have thought that this was even possible. This was such a monument to this new, uh, this elite idea, this worldview. And I feel like by me saying I don't think the the singular Illuminati is behind it, that I'm somehow whitewashing it. I hope that's not the case. Like, I do think, <laughs> just to be on the record, I do think killing 6.5 billion people is bad. Whatever your reasoning for it is, it's not a good, not a good look. But this was not predicted anywhere. Nobody saw this coming. This is the equivalent of burning the Library of Alexandria. This, in, for the conspiracy theory community, I honestly can't think. The only thing that could possibly rival this is a nuke taking out Area 51. I, I, this is huge. This is so huge for the conspiracy theory community. It was huge enough for me to interrupt my break and crawl into a sweaty closet without running my air conditioners for an hour before I normally do. I mean, this is huge. This is huge in the world of the conspiracy theory community. This would be on the level as if we found out Alex Jones got assassinated. And we could track it back to the CIA. Like, it's that big. I hope that I'm... I hope on one hand I'm not underselling it. I hope on one hand I'm not overselling it. You're like, Jason, you've compared it to the burning of the Library of Alexandria 9-11. You're definitely not underselling it. And I wanted to say to this, too. I want to wrap it up because this is just the weird world that we live in. This happened on July 6, 2022. Now that's 7, 6, and no, I'm joking, I'm not doing any of that numerology nonsense, I hate that stuff. But, no, this happened on July 6, 2022. On, this is weird, I don't even know if this means anything. On July 5th, 2022, they fired up the CERN reactor. That big old mechanical thing that spins atoms around super fast. It's somewhere in Europe. I don't have any notes on it. I'm just going off of my head. The CERN, it's the, I think it's the Large Hadron Collider. Wee, 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 wee. The little atoms are going around smashing into each other and stuff like that. It's like a Goldfinger concert at the speed of light. That, they, 
turned it on the other day. See, I was seeing that I'm on vacation, man. I'm on vacation, but I'm still reading all this stuff and conspiracy theory communities like, hold on to your Bernstein Bear books. We're about to shift timelines again because they announce when they're going to do this. It's not like some guy walks in and flips a switch and all of a sudden atoms are smashing into each other. They kind of got to prepare for this. They got to get all their nerd notes together, be able to observe this. So they announced that they were going to do this on July 5th and people started freaking out. Like they always freak out whenever they turn on this thing. They're like, it's going to change the timeline. All this stuff's going to happen. And I'm just sitting there and I'm eating my soup and crackers. And then they turn it on. <laughs> I'm stuck in an infinite loop of eating soup and crackers. I'm like, oh, good thing. I picked up some good soup. But no, the next day, you know, or a couple hours later, really, they turn on, you know, with the time differences in Europe, July 5th and everything like that at all. It's hard to really tell what when's happening. I guess I probably could have looked up a, a time clock or whatever they call it. Just a normal clock, just a calendar. But anyways, I remember they turned it on and I'm reading this stuff in the conspiracy news and people are like, what? I thought you told me that the timeline was supposed to shift, man. I didn't pay my rent. I didn't pay my rent and I quit my job because I figured I'd be in the Bernstein Bears universe. I thought I was going to become Brother Bear, but now I'm just homeless. People were mad that the timeline didn't shift. And then four to six hours later, depending on the time difference, eight hours later, whatever it is, someone blew up the Georgia Guidestones. Like the physical representation of the New World Order or the idea of the New World Order. Obviously, you have like the Bilderberg Group and the Trilateral Commission and Bohemian Grove and all those things. But those are like clubs. Those are places full of people. This was something you could go to visit and go, like, disagree with the first two. Uh, that's kind of spooky. It was this physical representation. And to some people, like a conspiracy theorist as me, it was this really weird kind of creepy thing that you would say this out loud. Then you have even more hardcore conspiracy theorists who they saw it as flaunting their plan, right? They're telling us what they're going to do. They're going to kill all of us. Because none of us are going to be in the 500 million, right? None of us are going to be there. And then to people who don't care, it's just a bunch of rocks out in the middle of nowhere. They, th this story will totally go... This story will be celebrated. This is a huge event in the conspiracy theory community. Um, but mo I don't think it'll wake anyone up for that, to use that terminology. I don't think anyone's, I don't think this is going to be mainstream. It's just a weird quirk in the conspiracy theory world. My question is now is, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm also a huge fan of true crime. Who did it? How did they do it? Are they going to get caught? Should we start looking at the CERN scientists? Did this have, I mean, they said that the authorities at this time said, we don't know if there was an explosion. There's a videotape of an explosion. Was this related to the CERN? Has the timeline shifted? Are we for the first time in knowable history, aka my life, aka the past 45 years, are we moving away from a march towards the new world order? Or were we ever headed there in the first place? Like, was it all conspiracy theory? Was it all people putting together pieces that didn't actually exist? Was there a singular movement by a singular group? Were there dozens, if not hundreds, of these groups around the world vying for control to give their version of the New World Order? And this was just one of those versions that was put out there. Did CERN shift the timeline so hard that the powers that be felt it. That this actually is the beginning of the end of the Illuminati, New World Order, One World Government. This is huge. This is so huge in the world of conspiracy theory community. That this blew up and they removed it. Because even if they replace it, it was destroyed in the first place. To a, to, a, to a conspiracy theorist like myself, right? I'm, I'm just saying there's different levels to it. To conspiracy theorists like myself, I thought that the first two... I totally disagreed with the first two rules. Um, I wouldn't have blown the statue up. <laughs> Since my eyes shift from side to side authorities, I was not in Georgia. I wouldn't have blown the statue up. I think it's okay to have ideas like that out there as re reprehensible as killing 6.5 billion people are... I'd rather know what they plan 
and for them to put it up there and then we can talk about it and stuff like that. I wouldn't have blown up. But to hardcore conspiracy theorists, this is the equivalent of taking out a battleship in the Pacific during World War II. This is a huge victory for somebody. The unassailable got punched. They got a bloody nose. Like, to a lot of people, it's just, oh, someone blew up America's Stonehenge? I didn't even know that America had a Stonehenge. But there's a core group of people that this is one of the greatest victories of their movement. So who are these people? And how did they do it? Because again, if you take the idea that there's one world, there's one group controlling everything, if you believe in that, and the only way you can make it in Hollywood is to sell your soul to the devil, and the only way you can be a politician is to sell your soul to the devil, and this is all controlled by this demonic master who's controlling the Illuminati, he's slowly influencing us and our children through the media and through politics and all this stuff, and they're taking over the world and they're destroying it. If you believe that, the idea that one person or a small group of people could destroy a physical representation of that order is monumental. It's monumental. So I, I don't know where this leads. This is what's so fascinating to me. I don't know where this leads. Is there, and actually, now that I think about it, is there a group, this would actually be one of those groups that I'm talking about. Like, there probably are, I know there are for a fact, multiple groups vying for control of the world. But I wonder if there's anti, the, we know there's people who are anti-Illuminati and you, you see them on YouTube and stuff like that. You read their stuff on blogs and things like that. But I wonder if there's like a hardcore militant group of people with funding, maybe even equal funding, to take down, like, the satanic New World Order. Is this the first shot in some crazy global civil war between secret societies that we don't even know the names of? We think we know the names of them. Was this destroyed because CERN did indeed shift us into another timeline? And it's a timeline where the Illuminati aren't in control? Did some lunatic who watched too many YouTube videos build a bomb in his garage and take it out here in the middle of the night? It was like 3, 4 in the morning and blow up one of the guide stones? Or was it, for lack of a better term, an act of God? Who knows? This is huge. This is so big for the conspiracy theory community that I didn't want to wait until Monday but that will end the first episode of the beginning of season 19. I do have to go back on vacation and I got to get out of this hot, hot closet. But I love you guys and I'm glad I was able to share this with you. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. TikTok is at DeadRabbitRadio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. I'll see you in a few days. Bye.